Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to interpret a chemical formula. Now, sometimes students find this tricky initially, but they soon get the idea, so stick with it. We've already seen that the periodic table shows us all of the different elements. Remember that each element has a symbol, and every symbol starts with a capital letter. Some symbols then have a second lowercase letter. This shows the chemical formula for the compound hydrogen fluoride. A chemical formula tells us the elements in a molecule and the numbers of atoms of each element. Looking at the formula, we can see the symbol for the element hydrogen and the symbol for the element fluorine. We can also use this formula to work out the number of atoms of hydrogen and fluorine. You can see that we have no number to the right of the hydrogen, so that means that we have one atom of hydrogen. We also have no number to the right of the fluorine, so again that means that we have one atom of fluorine. This shows the chemical formula for the compound potassium iodide. I'd like you to work out the elements in this compound and the number of atoms of each element. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, we can see that this compound contains the element potassium and the element iodine. And again, there are no small numbers to the right of these symbols. So this compound has one atom of potassium and one atom of iodine. This shows the chemical formula for the compound calcium sulfate. We have the symbols for the elements calcium, sulfur and oxygen. Again, we can use the formula to work out the number of atoms of each element. We have no small number to the right of the calcium. This means that we have one atom of calcium in this compound. There is no small number to the right of the sulfur, so that means that we have one atom of sulfur. And we have a small number 4 to the right of the oxygen, so that means that we have four oxygen atoms in this compound. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that in a specific compound, the number of atoms of each element is fixed. We can't change those numbers, because if we do, then we have a different compound. On the left, we've got the compound calcium sulfate, and on the right, we have the compound calcium sulfite. So changing one small number means that we've now got a totally different compound. OK, here's another chemical formula. This is the compound magnesium hydroxide. You'll notice that this formula contains brackets, so let's see what those mean. Well, just like before, we start by identifying the elements in the compound. Looking at the symbols, we can see that we have three elements. These are magnesium, oxygen and hydrogen. But what about the number of atoms? Well, there's no small number to the right of the magnesium, so we have one atom of magnesium in this compound. Inside the brackets, we've got oxygen and hydrogen, and there's a small 2 to the right of the brackets. A little number to the right of brackets multiplies everything inside the brackets. So in this case, we've got two atoms of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. Don't worry about why some compounds have brackets in their formula. It's used by chemists to work out how the atoms bond together. Here are some more compounds for you to try. I'd like you to identify the elements in these compounds and work out the number of atoms. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, in the first compound we have one atom of copper and one atom of iodine. In the second compound we have one atom of iron and two atoms of bromine. The third compound has one atom of zinc, one atom of carbon and three atoms of oxygen. And the final compound has one atom of aluminium, three atoms of oxygen and three atoms of hydrogen. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.